this is a practice that I do multiple times a day. It's called the energy reboot, and I'm going to do it with you right now. And then I'm going to talk you through the rest of it, the whole thing. Here we go. Hands to heart, breathe in love. Breathe out total and complete security. Breathe in guidance. Breathe out thank you. Breathe in joy. Breathe out love and gratitude for the next moment, the next task. That's it. This is the quick version of the energy reboot. And I do this multiple times a day. Uh, it takes only about 30 seconds, as you can see. And I encourage you to try this out. Uh, and you may even want to modify this in a way that um, makes even more sense to you. Modify it to your belief system and to your style of doing it. Uh, and I look forward to hearing how you might customize and modify it. But let me talk you through the different parts of it. Why do I do it in this, these different ways? And for those of you who have seen me talk about the Energy Reboot before, you'll notice that this, this new version is even shorter than the previous one because I think shorter is better. Uh, you're, you're more likely to do it more often. And it's really the, really the key is to do it often. If you only do it once a day in the morning or in the evening, yes, it ha has an impact in that moment. But if you do it frequently, like every hour that you work, then you can bring spirit into every hour that you work. And in fact, sometimes I do this multiple times each hour that I work. And the trigger for me has become whenever I have gotten away from being focused, creative, and happy, and connected to spirit, whenever I sense myself being less than optimally feeling, less than optimally thinking, that's when I immediately come back and do my energy reboot. Again, 20 to 30 seconds, it's totally worth it. I might do this, you know, twice every half hour uh, sometimes. And then sometimes I might go for several hours without doing it, then that's okay too. It's not that you have to do it every hour or every half hour, but just whenever you catch yourself being less than positive, less than connected to spirit, that's when you can just come back and do this. Okay. And if you happen to, if you happen to be with somebody else at the time, you don't have to hold your hands to the heart and close your eyes and do it. That might seem weird to somebody else. So you can just simply in a moment as you're talking to somebody or as you're working next to somebody, in the moment, you can just simply breathe these things in without having to close your eyes, without having to hold your heart. You can do this. And I, it, I've now done this multiple times a day for four years. So I've become very accustomed to being in this way, even without having to close my eyes, hold my hands, even without having to do it consciously. It's become almost subconscious for me to be breathing and thinking in this way. And so that's why it's, it's more and more easy for me to work in the joyfully productive way because I've completely changed my attitude to work. No matter what work I'm doing, no matter if it's painful, so-called painful work, no matter if it's bookkeeping or taxes or boring administrative work or the hard work of reaching out to a, a potential referral source or a potential client, anything, nothing scares me anymore because I have really integrated the energy reboot mindset and heart set into the way I work every moment of every day. And of course, I still have my, my difficult times and my challenging moments. But when I do, I, meet, and I, try to, I try to catch myself having those challenging moments and difficulties and hardships. And I come back and I consciously do the energy reboot again to bring myself back to that state of being of spirit connected positivity. Okay, so let me talk you through why I do what are the different parts of the energy reboot? So breathing in love, what does that mean? I literally believe that the universe is made of molecules or waves of love. 
like our science, this sounds crazy because our scientific instruments are not yet fine enough, subtle enough to be able to measure that the, the, the smallest particle is not a, whatever they call it these days, is it a quark or whatever they call it, the smallest particle. And the smallest thing is not a wave either. One day, science, maybe it's 100 years from now, I don't know when, but science will one day have the, such fine measurements that they will, they will come to measure and they will say, we don't know what it means, but the smallest, the most basic element of this universe, the most basic wave or vibration or whatever you want to call it, is love. We, we now understand that it's actually love. It's what we all feel for one another when we are in a, a bigger mindset of caring and compassion. Somehow the universe is made of that. And it's at some, some source, some source. We don't know what the source is. It's a mystery to us. But there is some fabric of the universe that's literally made of love and light. And it's somehow connecting everything. It, one particle can be connected to another particle a, a trillion miles away. And the love is somehow connecting that other particle. We don't know what that means, but we figure it out. It's love. So I think one day we're going to discover, science is going to discover that. But that's what I believe, that when I breathe in, I literally am breathing in molecules and vibrations of love. I don't know what that means, but that's my faith. And that's what I believe. And I think just watch this video 100 years from now. Whoever's watching this 100 years from now, yes, George Cow said it in 2019. I said this in 2017 when I, or 2016, whenever I first made the Energy Reboot video. All right, so that's breathing in love, okay? That's what the universe is made of. We are connected to, uh, at all times, you are connected to a source of love that is unlimited and that is more powerful than any other force in this universe. So breathe in love, breathe in that, that, that power, that connection. And then breathing out total and complete security because that is the truth of your soul and my soul. We are completely secure. You cannot screw that up. There's nothing you can do. No mistakes you can make. No, you know, errors of thought, errors of action. How incredibly bad your habits are. I don't care. Does not, there's nothing you can do possibly, excuse me, to screw up the fact that your destiny is completely secure. Your soul and destiny is completely secure. And the destiny is one of complete bliss, complete knowledge of everything in the universe. You, if you've ever read any, any near-death experiences, if you haven't, I highly, highly recommend it. This is what changed my life um, back in I think it was junior high or high school that I came across reading near-death experiences and it changed my life. And it really set me on a path toward bringing spirituality into everything that I do. And it gave me such a profound feeling of security that has stayed with me all my life. It's the reading about near-death experiences. So go to near-death.com. That's the website that I, that, that kind of, I started with near hyphen or dash death.com and start reading some of those stories and you will be amazed. Um, and I should say, by the way, why is this on a business coach's channel? Okay. Why is George Cal, the business coach talking about these things? Because this sense, this profound sense of psychological security is what has allowed me to accomplish everything I've accomplished in my business. This is what allows me to show up consistently whenever I have planned to show up, ignoring the fear. This is what allows me to ignore the fear in my, in my business and do it anyway. This is what allows me to create things that I'm scared to create and put it out there, even though I'm scared that it may or may not work, that people might judge me, that this may somehow damage my reputation, that this might be a failure. This is how I've conquered fear in my business, this practice of energy reboot that I do multiple times a day, which brings me back to the memory of total security that came from reading about near-death experiences. 
And so this is why I say that you have to customize this energy reboot to make sense to you. You might not believe in near-death experiences. Maybe you're an atheist, but even as an atheist, you can still believe in total security, knowing that if you have a psychological security, you will accomplish much more in your life and in your business, even as, a, as an atheist who believes nothing of the spiritual world, that there is no spirit, that there's only matter, that that current science is complete, which I think is ridiculous. But let's say you believe that current science is complete in its knowledge of the universe, and that there is only matter, and there's only what is measurable, then you can still study current science and realize that psychological science shows us that if you have complete psychological security, if you're not no longer insecure, okay, if you're no longer insecure, and, and when I say, of course, we all have moments of insecurity, so do I. All of us will have moments of insecurity, but you've got to first settle on a philosophy of life that allows you to say, there is the possibility of psychological security. There's the possibility of complete psychological security such that I don't have to be afraid Theoretically, at least, I know that I don't have to be afraid of taking actions. I don't have to be afraid of doing things that are scary. I, could, I, could, I know the fear will always be there, but I could always ignore the fear and replace it with adventure, replace it with curiosity, replace it with play. So whether you are a spiritual person, a spiritual beliefs, or whether you're an atheist, you can still use this. Okay. So breathe. So that's, that, that first exhale was total security. Okay, the, 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 the second inhale, the second breath is guidance. And what I mean by guidance is I believe that the universe, like I said, is made up of God, essentially. So the universe is made up of love, light, and wisdom. Okay, so guidance is available to you 24-7. It's available to you at all times, at any moment. doesn't matter if you're in the darkest depths of despair. Guidance is there and available to you. The question is whether you're open to it or not. That's the question. Now, I personally believe that you have a guardian angel that is with you your entire life from birth until death. And when you die, you will finally see your guardian angel and you will fall to your knees and be in tears of gratitude that this guardian angel has saved you so many times from accidents, has saved you from all these things and has whispered to you all throughout your life to try to guide you on, on a good path. That's what I believe personally. That's based on my readings of spirituality, spiritual readings and near-death experiences, all that stuff. But whatever, you know, let's, again, I'll take it from the spiritual point of view. I'll take it from the atheist point of view. So let's say you believe in none of this jargon and none of this new agey stuff and you believe that there's only matter well, then guidance is always available to you. What I mean by that is your higher brain, your executive function is always available to you, okay? And, and now science is also beginning to understand that your gut is also a third brain. You've got, a, you've got there's, there's three brains in your body. Science is discovering this. Your, the brain, the physical brain in here, your heart is actually... Uh, is a brain on its own. It, ha it, 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 it controls certain parts of your, your being and your body. And your gut also controls your immune system. The gut and the immune system are connected and connected to your brain as well. So, uh, so anyway, guidance is always available to you, whether you believe in spiritual guidance or whether you believe in physical guidance. So your, your brains are always available to you, okay? And when you breathe, so I'm just talking atheist, you know, physical matter here. When you breathe and bring more oxygen into your body, you have more guidance available to you. So when you literally breathe in guidance, or that's what I mean by the second breath, breathe in guidance, or for the spiritual people, it's breathing in the guidance, the spiritual guidance of the universe. Breathe in and then breathing out, thank you. It's just, it's just a physiological and spiritual response of gratitude that the fact that you know, whether you believe in uh, just the physical brains of the body and so, my God, the miracles of these brains, or whether you believe in the higher guidance, and thank you is a natural response to love and guidance, isn't it? Thank you, right? Now, um, and, and for those of you who uh, don't believe in spiritual love, well, love, physical love, you know, 
the, the memories of love are always available to you. So that was the first breath is breathing in the memories of love or for those of us spiritual, breathing in the molecules of love, okay? So that's the, the first breath was love in, total security out, okay? And these are all just mem remembering, you know, being in that, that, that energy, breathing in guidance, that's the second breath, breathing out thanks, thank you, gratitude, okay? And the third breath is breathing out, breathing in joy, the joy of the moment. And this is, makes sense whether you're, you know, atheist or whether you're a spiritual person, you can breathe in joy, like the, just thinking the joy of this moment, or as I believe that the universe is literally made of joy, that the universe is literally made of all the good things that God is, love, light, wisdom, virtue, joy, the universe molecules, and that connects one molecule to another molecule five trillion miles away, okay? It's connected by virtue, connected by love, light, wisdom, joy. It's all, it's all here. It's all here. We can breathe in at any time. So the third breath is breathing in joy. And then the fourth breath is breathing in love and gratitude for the very next moment that you know, the next task you're doing. So for example, I did that before this video, I breathe out love and gratitude for doing this video. You can breathe out love and gratitude for doing your taxes, right? Uh, and I always use those extreme examples because if you can do it with the extreme examples, you can do it with, um, you can do it with, with uh, pleasant examples. Sorry, I had to do something here. So even if you're doing taxes, you can breathe out love and joy into those taxes. Like the fact that you live in a society that has, common services taken care of for you, you know, fire department, the roads, you know, are, are not full of giant holes that your car will crash into every second, right? You, you know, so many services that we, we just take for granted that society provides military defense. Yes, the defense budget is way too big, but anyway, still we are prevented from invaders every second, okay? So all these things, that, that are provided for us, that we pay taxes for. Yes, we can disagree with where our taxes are going, but still, and, and, you know, and you can also breathe in love and gratitude for, for the taxes, meaning this is an opportunity for you to use your brain, to practice the numbers part of your brain, the detail-oriented part of your brain, and this trains your brain to be sharper. You know, so you could breathe out love and gratitude for any task that you have to do, any moment that is next for you. And of course, in our business, it's about reaching out for potential collaborators or doing Facebook ads or writing content or, or doing some bookkeeping or doing some administrative work. Breathe out love and I get to do this thing that I'm about to do. What a privilege it is in life to be able to become a better person through whatever task I am doing. That's really the point of all this. The point of all this is not to finish your bookkeeping or to finish writing that piece or to finish reaching out. The point of this is to grow as a person as you are doing those things. So you breathe out love and gratitude for the privilege, the opportunity to grow spiritually as you do whatever it is you are doing next. So that is really the energy reboot practice. I do this multiple times a day, like I said, and I encourage you to do this as often as you can throughout every day that you work. And as you do this multiple times, you will therefore infuse the profound spirit of love and wisdom and gratitude and joy into your business. And you will find yourself being able to do the things that used to scare you, that used to stop you, that where you used to procrastinate, you can bring love and joy and wisdom and gratitude into everything you do in your business. I hope this is helpful and you can watch the beginning of this video again to any time, as many times as you want to redo the practice with me or, you know, and, and like I said, you could customize this practice. The things, the words that I use, love and total security, you can change out those words to be anything else. But the core practice is really intentional breathing, conscious breathing multiple times an hour or throughout the day so that you can continue to bring oxygen into your brain and your body. And not just that, but connect it to a higher, your higher values, essentially. I hope this is helpful. And let me do the practice one more time. Okay. As uh, well, let me actually see if you have any comments or questions. 
Um, and go ahead and comment below right now if you have any comments or questions about the Energy Reboot practice. And I'm right now loading the comments from the live uh, Facebook video participants here. So I am going to go ahead and open this up and uh, see what comments there are. And I want to thank those of you for joining me, Captain and um, Carissa, Lisa, Susan, Elizabeth, Peter, Matt. Um, and I see, um, yeah, Carissa says, I'm going to write this practice out and put it on my mirror. Uh, and Captain, thank you for your comment. And uh, uh, Matt as well. Yes. Um, all right. So let's complete this video now with actually doing the practice one more time. Breathe in love. Breathe out total security. Breathe in guidance. Breathe out, thank you. Breathe in joy. Breathe out love and gratitude for the next moment and the next task. I wish you well, and I hope you will do this practice several times today. Take care.